Hey guys, welcome to another how-to video from Dream Trip Oz. It's uh, more of a lessons learned kind of scenario today. I made a critical error when trying to uh, clean the contactors in the solenoid box in our winch controller. I left the power connected, solenoid shorted, cooked it. Anyway, I'll go through the detail once I open up the old one and show you through. But today we are replacing the solenoid uh, in the control box on our uh, four-wheel drive super center, our King's winch. Let's get straight in, eh? Right, so this time around I'm not making the same mistake, right? So what I've done here, I've just uh, popped some, this is the fuse, it's the inline fuse for the winch, um, and you just twist it to disconnect, to break the cir circuit open. And I've just put some tape around it so it doesn't accidentally uh, twist back together and join the circuit, and then I end up in all kinds of trouble. Anyway, I'm gonna pull this old uh, control box open, the old solenoid, and I'll show you what happened. Righto, so what we're looking at here is the solenoid uh, housing and the uh, control connection wires from the handheld controller uh, that plugs in to the side of the box there. Four pins, four wires, the 12 volt supply for the control, <clears throat> a neutral connection, and a, a motor forward and a motor reverse or the other way around i'm not entirely sure which is which <clears throat> and the same corresponding uh large gauge uh, heavy duty cables to supply the motor the winch motor itself now i did see an awesome video on youtube and i'll see if i can link it here of a guy who explains how you can test to see which part of your winch is uh, not functioning um, quite simply by using a pair of jumper cables and connecting to the uh, the positive and negative terminals on the winch and then swapping the polarity to see if it runs both backwards and forwards pretty cool video i'll shoot that out to you because it's probably worth checking that before you go opening up your um, control box but anyway i'll get it open and i'll show you what the solenoids look like so you don't make the same mistake i made Righto, so before I pull it completely apart, I'll see if I can hold it all together. Remember there are seals in here to keep it watertight, dust tight, dirt tight, so that it uh, doesn't get full of gunk and then the contactors won't work. All right, when I open it up, you'll see. All right, there we are. So this side is a magnet. And when <clears throat> current is applied, it applies a magnetic force and it pulls on these solenoids, these pins, which make the connections inside this box. There's a couple of different bus bars that send the current where it needs to to control the motor back and forth. All right, what happened was I took this section of the housing off here. And what happened was the solenoid dropped, shorted on the bus bar, and cooked the inside. There's supposed to be a couple of springs in there that hold it, retain it, stop it from moving back and forth and keep it, uh, keep it suspended between the contactors. And it welded itself to the bus bar, melted off. And uh, she no go anymore. So time for a replacement. Anyway, I'll pull this off, disconnect it all. And I'll take it in the garage and I'll show you the new one. Hopefully it looks identical. Righto, so I got this guy on eBay all up. It was about uh, 60 bucks, including shipping. And the reason I went for this, instead of one off the shelf at Repco, which they do sell, they do stock them with for about 100 bucks, I think, is this one looks almost identical. In fact, I almost go as far as to say it is identical, at least close enough to the one that's inside our current winch the idea being is i need it to fit inside the same housing because we uh we head off in a few weeks for um christmas so 
I don't want to be left hamstrung. Anyway, I'm not going to open this one up because I don't want to wreck it. I'm just going to get it out, get it hooked onto the terminals, get the control box on, and we'll um, double check and make sure it works. Right, eh? Come for a walk. So far, so good. No smoke. You beauty, hey? So it's running out. <coughs> right. You can hear the click in there. That's the solenoid firing. Click, click, moving back and forwards inside the housing. And let's see if it winds in. Hey, beautiful, hey? Like a bought one. All right, come with me and I'll show you inside the solenoid. Righto, so I did manage to break it even more as I was pulling it apart, but you can see here the bus bars, right? Inside here is the solenoids and they're connected to these contactors. You can see there, that one there is pretty dirty. That's probably why it wasn't working too well. It's a little bit burnt out. It's been shorting, arcing. It's caused a little bit of uh, oxidization on the terminal there, on that contactor. That's what sends either the positive or the negative current to the motor to make it turn back or forth, in or out. And it's that magnet that drives those solenoids. Fascinating stuff. Well, look, there's no doubt that I am not an expert in this stuff. <clears throat> but I hope you've learned something, at least at the very least, you've learned what not to do if your uh, contactors in your solenoid control box uh, start failing. Don't try to open it up with the battery connected. Yeah, uh, I probably could have saved myself um, 65 bucks and a whole lot of heartache if I just disconnected the battery, opened it up, cleaned the contactors and put it back together. Would have kept going probably another, I don't know how many years we've had that five years six years so anyway thanks for watching stay tuned if uh, you like this there's we've got plenty of other videos on our channel um how to videos and stuff like that and a couple of other ones coming i'm going to do a maybe a compressor install or something like that but stay tuned thanks for watching <laughs>